Hey friends, Sleepy here, and welcome to another episode of the Weekly Playlist. It's Friday, so you guys know what that means. Time for me to share with you guys the games I have been playing during the week. I'll let you guys know my thoughts and opinions on these games. Of course, I want to hear what your guys' thoughts and your opinions on these games. If you played them before, what you liked about them, what you didn't like about them. I'd also like to hear what games you guys have been playing, because you guys give me great ideas for games to play, you know, when I hear about the different games you guys are uh, playing. I also would like to get any recommendations for games you guys think I should check out. I have a huge library of games for a variety of consoles, and I'm always looking for new games to try and experience that I might have missed that have come out, which there is a lot of games out there that I have uh, missed. And if I don't have them, I'll add them to my list of games to buy on my website. So always looking for recommendations. We'll get started here. i got three games to share with you guys today for three different consoles. First one, I have been playing on uh, my way to work and way home whenever I ride the bus. And that is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. So the Switch version is the one that I've been playing. The case finally came in from uh, Gamefly that my wife got me this for uh, Christmas. I absolutely love this game. One of my favorite Mario Kart games of all time. Just love how much content is packed into this game. All the DLC and stuff that you guys had that was available in the Wii U version that you had to buy is actually in this. You have all the extra cars, the extra characters, and the extra tracks are all in this uh, right from the beginning. So you don't have to buy anything extra like you did on the Wii U version, which is great. It's also, I love that this is portable with the Switch, so I like to be able to play this on the go. The graphics have been uh, upgraded from the Wii U version to the Switch since the Switch is more of an HD console than the Wii U was. I mean, the Wii U did have HD graphics, but not as good as the Nintendo Switch are, especially when you hook this up to TV mode. The game just looks amazing. The colors are vibrant, they're bright, colorful. The music is amazing. And I just love uh, playing this game. I have up to 12 players in a uh, battle, which is cool. You also can play this one online, thanks to Nintendo Switch's online service, which is great. You only have to pay $20 for the whole year to have access to play games multiplayer. So if you guys are into multiplayer games, you're definitely going to enjoy playing Mario Kart 8 online. Just be warned that there's people on there that are just amazing at this game and crazy. I don't even get into the multiplayer in there because, you know, I've been, I'm pretty good at multi at the games, but some of these people are just like gods at the game. So I, <laughs> I don't really play it too much on multiplayer. You know, I'm just have fun playing against the computers. Of course, this has your classic... Um, Difficulty settings with the different CCs where you start at 50, they have 100, 150, 200 in rear mode. And the higher your CC level you go, the more difficult the computer can be. And man, some of those higher difficulties are just brutal. Now I'm just pointing, I've been going through beating the 50 CCs and I almost have all the tracks beat. First place finishes in all the 50 CC. Then I want to go through and do it all in 100 and 150, etc. You know, just keep going through those. And unlocking stuff, which is another thing I really like about this game is, you know, you get to unlock different carts, you get to unlock different gliders and different tires because all of them actually affect performance, acceleration, you know, the weight of the character and everything like that. And it handles, you know, you can change the performance of your cart that you're driving and make it a little quicker, make it a little faster, or you might want to make it a little heavier. Maybe you want it to control uh, better in different kind of um, tracks and stuff. And so you can adjust that all with the different kind of cars you have. Now, the only thing I didn't like is that all the characters are unlocked at the beginning. When and I had this on the Wii U, you actually had a bunch of the characters were locked away. And you actually had to unlock them. So that's one thing I wish they had kept in this one. You know, it was another incentive to get you to keep playing the game. But I do like that at least, you know, you don't have all the carts. You don't have all the upgrades available. You know, you actually play the game, you unlock those. So that's something I really like. They also rehauled the battle system. Because the one on the Wii U was kind of crappy. It was basically the battling where you shoot each other with objects and try to destroy the three balloons. But it was on like regular racetracks. And you know that just doesn't work. You know the previous ones had like battle arenas. Well they redid that for the Switch version and made that where you don't have to race on tracks. You actually have arenas to battle in. So that's another thing I like that's better than the Wii U version. But definitely if you're a fan of Mario Kart games you've got to play Mario Kart 8. Especially the deluxe version here on Nintendo Switch is amazing. Like I said, if you like playing online, you can easily play this multiplayer with people all over the world. Just be warned that people are just maniacs in this game. <laughs> just The skill level is just way up there. But still a fun game. Great game to play uh, multiplayer in your local house. You can play up to four players, which is great. I do enjoy playing this with my son and my wife uh, occasionally. Fun game. 
definitely worth checking out, especially if you're a fan of Mario Kart games. Check out Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Either get the Wii U or the Switch version. Great game. Next one we're going to talk about here is classic game for PlayStation 1. Absolutely love this uh, series, and I have not played this original one in a while, and that is the very first Command & Conquer, which last year I was playing through the Command & Conquer Red Alert and Red Alert Retaliation ones, but I wanted to go back and play the classic one, which started the whole Command & Conquer genre and the whole RTS series, and it's actually what got me into RTS games was Command & Conquer. Absolutely love this game, and I love it on the PlayStation. Now, of course, I originally played this on PC, but that was before. Well, that was before. Um, that was after I got introduced to it, thanks to my good buddy Bobby. He had his um, dad had a friend named George, this guy that used to travel around uh, selling coins and things like that. And occasionally he would stay at my buddy Bobby's house for like a couple of weeks, and he was on his trip selling stuff. You know, decided he would stay with them. And he didn't have to stay in a hotel. And he always had a PlayStation 1 with him, and he had a, these Command & Conquer games with him. I used to watch him play them, and he used to let me play them. And they were really fun games, and I absolutely love them. And this is definitely one, uh, if you're a fan of the Com Command & Conquer games, and you're looking for a good one to get, get it for the PlayStation 1. You know, it's not as good, of course, as the PC version, but it's still really good. Um, it's got over 60 missions, and that includes all in all including five specially designed playstation missions so there's actually five ones just for the playstation version which is cool and all 15 command and conquer covert operation missions so the covert operations was a dlc expansion pack that they released for uh, this game so they have all those from the pc which is great and then you can play as either the gdi or you can play as the nod the two sides which i do like playing as the nod side a lot because you have that uh cane I can't remember what the actor's name for him, but it's really cool. You know, you have the those cheesy cutscenes and stuff and this and the music. Especially like the intro song. It just like brings back a lot of memories popping it in. So if you're a fan of RTS games and if you've never played any of the way at Command and Conquer games, you definitely owe yourself. Go back and try the original one here on PlayStation 1. Great game. This one sells in my area for about fifteen to thirty dollars. Like it varies by stores. I've seen it as cheap as ten sometimes, but right now it's generally ringing around twenty to twenty-five bucks. Definitely worth uh, checking out, though. If you're a fan of RTS games, gotta play these old classic ones because these are what help define the RTS genre. And you know, not, there's not too many RTSs released these days. It's not a very popular genre anymore. But man, in the nineties, this these kind of games were just everywhere, and they were just great. And I just had to go back and play through the classic one. I forgot all about the story and everything. And so I'm working on beating the Nod campaign. And then when I beat that, I want to go back and beat the GDI campaign. Fun games. Definitely should check it out. Awesome game. And our last one we're going to talk about for Xbox One is Mass Effect Andromeda. And I actually just got this uh, for Christmas. Um, I got a gift card from an employee at my work and I bought a bunch of games at GameStop and this is one of them which I'll go over all that stuff in my uh, next pickups video but I would always wanted to play this game I heard mixed things about it I heard a lot of people said they hated it I heard people that liked it and then I heard things about it that weren't even true like people were talking about like, oh it's not even a true Mass Effect game it's just a multiplayer through battling bots game and this battling people and that's all the game is and so you know I didn't know what to think of the game but you know, I started doing my research on it and find out that, you know, that's more than just like a multiplayer battling game that people were saying it is. Because that's not actually what it is. It's not even a multiplayer battling game. It actually has a campaign and a whole story and everything. And it has a multiplayer, but it has like a, um, a co-op thing, multiplayer. Not like a battling each other like Call of Duty that people were saying. So whoever was saying that was an idiot. It was definitely lying. So... After I bought this, I went to go online and found out they had a big sale going on and you could download like the digital deluxe something edition to get you extra content and stuff in the game for it was only nine ninety nine, only like eighty bucks or some crazy amount. So I'm like, all right, I'll buy that digital version and so now I have that with the extra content and I put in several hours into this game this week and I'm absolutely uh, loving it. Great game plays just like the previous Mass Effect uh, games, you know, it's an RPG, you know, third person adventure game, really cool, so you take on the um, role of writer, and you could be either a male or female, it's a brother and sister uh, team, 
and you can choose to be either one. And one thing I really like is you can just either play as the default characters that the game has created, or you can go into the character creation. You can change their appearance, which is just actually is a pretty robust um, uh, character creation. You can change the eyes, you can change the facial features, you can change skin color. Um, they're really cool. Like I said, you can play either male or female. I'm playing as uh, the male writer and I'm liking the game uh, so far. Definitely worth checking out. So the game takes place 600 years after the Mass Effect uh, original trilogy. So it actually, the beginning, you know, starts, takes place from between Mass Effect 2 and 3. They end up sending these colony ships to the Andromeda galaxy, which is near our Milky Way galaxy. But it takes them 600 years to reach there. And the whole point is like, Sending the different alien species and, you know, expanding everybody into a new uh, galaxy and expanding humanity and the other alien races and stuff and starting all over. However, you know, since it's so far away, you know, it takes years to get there and it takes them actually 600 years to get there and they're all in cryosleep. And after 600 years, you arrive in this Andromeda galaxy and, you know, like the initiative that created it, you know, they're promising, you know, you're going to find these golden worlds as they call them. And they're gonna be beautiful paradises and you're gonna go there and terraform them and get it all ready and start a whole other civilization of course you know anything ambitious like that doesn't always work out and as soon as your ship gets there it gets damaged you find out that uh it's not everything that everybody agreed to you know it's not this like famed worlds aren't like beautiful like it there's like wastelands the galaxy's all screwed up and there's actually end up running into another a new alien racer which you can't understand and are very hostile and just start attacking you and you start off the game going through adventure you do run into this giant nexus ship that they have there which is supposed to be where they're going to create the government and the government bodies of the new galaxy and that's where like all the leaders and stuff are supposed to be at and live and when you first get there you know you find it kind of deserted then you find out that there's people who were there that was started building on the galaxy. They had some internal conflicts and stuff. And then the game really opens up once you beat through the initial main mission of the story opens up. And you get through that and you can actually eventually get to the whole game where it opens up and you get all the different quests and stuff. So I really like that. It actually took me like five hours to actually get my own uh, ship. And then using that ship, you can travel around the galaxy and go to different uh, areas and have different missions and stuff. And there was a lot of stuff just in that initial, after you get off that first world and you get into the Nexus, you know, there's a lot of side missions and stuff for you to do. So there's not just like the main quest, you know, there's a lot of side quests in the game, which I really like, which is awesome. You also earn skill points as you level up so you can level up your character. You can pick different classifications too, so you can specialize in different stuff. You know, whether you want to be like a combat guy or you want to be like more of a guy that uses like magic, biotic abilities, you know, or you want to be kind of a stealth dude. So you can choose the different kind of fighter you want to play as. So if you played the previous Mass Effect games, then you guys know the different specializations you have in the game. And you also have uh, different people in your team that you get recruited that you can use to help you on your mission and stuff, which is something I really like. I do know that... Um, choices in the game matter and that does affect the ending so there are more than one ending in the game but you always have in mass effect games which are great having a blast with it so far definitely glad that i decided to give it a try so if you've been on the fence about it you know like oh, i don't know if it's going to be good you know i like it just as much as i like the previous three mass effect games and i definitely think it's worth checking out and you may still be able to get the digital deluxe copy on the microsoft store right now it might just still be on sale for $9.99 I don't remember if it is now or not but you know I saw it on there for that cheap deal and got all that stuff for 10 bucks a hell of a deal I got this at GameStop for $7.50 so still a pretty cheap game to get I like it we you guys read your quick it says so chart your own course in a dangerous new galaxy as the pathfinder you will unravel the mysteries of the Andromeda galaxy and lead the search for, for humanity's new home so that's really cool all the classic um, alien species that were in the original Mass Effect trilogy are in this game. And there's a lot of neat characters in it. I really do love the voice acting too. They picked some great voice actors for this game. 
and you know like the characters again i like it when they go to detail you know a big character you know how have that deep voice a kind of small character has like a more you know like lighter voice so like the characters the characters match the voice actors that's what i kind of like you know the voice actors match them like you know somebody looks like like that's how they would sound you're like yeah that guy kind of sounds like how he would sound that way and that's how they do in the game so i do like that I like there's a variety of different weapons that you can unlock and then within that digital version you know i got extra um armor at the beginning i got new weapons and stuff so they got you know your little like pistol type weapons you got shotguns you got assault rifles you've got sniper rifles which are really cool you also have melee weapons too so you can actually melee uh creatures and enemies and stuff if they get too close to you in combat which is great and i do like the combat in this game it's awesome you know it's third person and it's not a turn-based game at all you know it's just you know action on at the time and it is fun your character will go down into uh, cover and duck for you and then you can reload and fight again because if you just go running out guns blazing you know especially if you play in the harder difficulties you'll die quickly so you definitely have to take your time playing this game and just you know have fun with it and i can see myself putting a lot of hours into this game I decided to take a little break from Assassin's Creed Valhalla as I've got over 40 hours in that game and you know I was just like yeah I want to play something a little bit different and so I decided I'd try out this Mass Effect Andromeda and I am liking it so I'll probably be playing this one now for the next several weeks and so far I'm loving the game like I said I'm about I don't know I'd probably say six or seven hours into the game and I'm currently working on a bunch of side quests at the moment because I like to do all the side quests and then keep working the main uh, quest because I do know that there's a certain like point of no return once you do a certain thing in the main quest you lose access to other quests if you don't do them so I like to do all the side stuff before I can finish up mop up the main quest as there's so much extra stuff to do and explore there's a lot of things to read a lot of things to learn history and stuff and it's just really cool discovering uh, stuff that are in this Andromeda galaxy which is something I like to do I like to explore the planets and check out the sites and stuff and there's also another like ancient alien race or something that you actually get to study in this game that they're trying to find out information about which i thought was pretty cool so definitely give mass effect andromeda a try if you ever enjoyed the original trilogy you will definitely enjoy this one on the xbox one and you know don't listen to all the hate that people were given i don't know why people said it was a shitty game or that it, that it didn't even have a story to play through because that was a complete lie and it definitely does so give it a try as always guys we'll do our quick little recap you know i talked about mario kart 8 deluxe it's a wonderful mario kart game hd you can play multiplayer if you want to thanks to the nintendo switch's online service so you can play players anywhere in the world that you want you can also play local co-op with your family and friends great game a lot of characters a lot of stuff to unlock tons of tracks you have the new tracks you have classic tracks from super nintendo all the way through mario kart 7 on the 3ds so a lot of classic tracks to play which i love a lot of great content we also talked about command and conquer this is a classic rts game this started the Command & Conquer RTS genre series of RTS games. And it's just like one of the games I think about when I think of RTSs, I think of Command & Conquer. This game is amazing. It's awesome. It has over 60 missions to play, including five that were made just for the PlayStation alone. Also has the Covert Operations uh, DLC expansion pack that was released on PCs in this. And you can play as either the GDI or you can play as not so you have two different sides to play through I recommend playing through both of them two different uh, campaigns good side evil side and you get different perspectives it has the classic uh, full motion videos with the cheesy characters and everything and it's just an amazing game if you like RTSs you gotta try it out it's awesome and then of course we talked about Mass Effect Andromeda which this game is great great rpg great in uh, game in the mass effect series if you played the first three mass effect games you definitely should play mass effect and drama not even if you only played like the first one you know they don't have to worry about you know playing them for any kind of story because this is set in its own time like they do mention some stuff that happened from the previous uh trilogy but this is its own uh, galaxy and it's 600 years after the events in the mass effect one two and three so everything in that thing really doesn't affect the story here and it's really cool to discover what's going on and of course you guys know i don't like to ruin any story i just gave you guys a quick brief thing about going you know why they went to another galaxy and that they run into problems and it's not as good as 
you know, everybody thought it is. Like, of course, you know, there's nothing is going to be as awesome as somebody thinks it's going to be or as easy as they think something's going to be. And, of course, you naturally run into problems. Of course, if they went there and everything worked out smooth, there wouldn't be a game to play. So definitely worth checking out. So let me know your guys' opinions on these three games. If you guys have played them, what you liked about them, what you didn't like about them. I want to hear what games you guys have been playing. And if you have a recommendation on any games you think I should check out, please let me know. And I'm always looking for new games to play and experience. You guys have a wonderful day. Take care and sleep. We'll see you guys next time.